Welcome back. It's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for Off the Press. We have Okuna Bonkotaria, who's on standby. He joins the conversation in no time. Okuna Bonkotaria, it's good to have you join us this morning. Yeah, good morning, Nessia. Good morning, Kofi. All right, uh, let's take a look at the leadership. Uh, I beg your pardon. The Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, we'll take a look at the board caption on the Punch. And the, the banner header says, Bunis men tighten hold on APC. Akpan Odoe Degger returns to office. On the net, they're interesting riders. Convention remains shaky. Court fails to lift injunction. Neck holds Thursday. APC raises or rises costs, raises cost of chairmanship form to 20 million naira as aspirants snob consensus. Federal government tapped 2.2 billion dollar euro bond for fuel subsidy funding. This is according to the Minister of Finance. Amid fuel crisis, Nigeria's inflation hit 15.70 percent in February. Senate proposes airlines bailouts. Operators insist on flight suspension. Nigeria recorded 1.94 trillion naira foreign trade deficit in 2021. This is according to report. And you have Ogun, Anambra, Kaduna, others fail to assess 33.6 billion naira UBEC fund. And uh, just before we move away from the Punch newspaper this morning, you have please protesters clash as truck crushes Lagos Okada ride and passenger. Uh, that unfortunate incident that happened uh, yesterday around Chevron Eleganza Axis here in Lagos State. And you have um, Lagos socialite gets two million naira bill for doing. Uh, for doling out fuel souvenirs at party. Uh, you also remember that one. And we take this one quickly. Kogi Kapets Lukman for attacking Bello, NLC Falls ex PGF boss. And the Kebi bandits invade Niger, kill DPO, and two policemen, four vigilantes. Uh, these are the headlines on uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. Straight to the Guardian with these headlines. Tougher days ahead as energy costs trigger fresh round of inflation. Tougher days as energy costs trigger fresh round of inflation. Of course, with the latest inflation figures released, uh, the following writers to that, start that headline. Headline inflation rose marginally 15.7% in February. Figures deceptive, politically influenced or insists. Experts seek removal of import duties on imported petroleum products. Resuscitate moribund refineries to boost availability, FG urged. And last year's trade deficit hits 1.94 trillion naira, 96% higher than in 2020. A grim economic figures there. More from The Guardian. UK suspends visa applications in Nigeria. Details on page 3. Judge threatens to dump Abakari's rights suit over delay tactics. Gunmen kill four cops, seven civilians in KB. Yet again, KB state. Aviation experts urge federal government to allow local airlines import Jet A1. Um, of course, we did discuss that on, on the top training segment, saying that uh, military of the NNPC had said they would be doing that. APC convention, Bunis team returns, takes charge in Abuja. And finally, from the Guardian newspaper, only four doctors available to 10,000 Nigerians, says FG. Details on page four. Away from the Guardian, we take a look at the leadership paper this morning and uh, might just be dominating all of the papers. You have as Buni finally takes charge, Nick Einek confirms attendance of APC neck meeting tomorrow. As Boni finally takes charge, INEC confirms attendance of APC neck meeting tomorrow. Party pegs chairmanship form at 20 million naira. Drama in court as lawyers fight over representation in APC's suit to vacate court order. While we're training convention protocol officers 
uh, Ganduje is quoted on that. And you also have the PDP neck to produce shadow for party primary. Nigeria's 2022 budget deficit may hit 10 trillion naira as oil export drops. Reps vow to recover 2.6 trillion naira oil and gas debt. And uh, you have donor funding for family planning declined by $10 million in three years. Uh, Zelensky seeks Canada's support for Ukraine no-fly zone. And these are the headlines on the leadership. Today's she newspaper sticks with uh, uh, the politics, as some of its uh, counterparts have, uh, this time turning its searchlight or spotlight to the People's Democratic Party, quite curiously, um, with the headline, Confusion in the PDP over plot to stop Atiku Saraki Tambua. Confusion in the PDP over plot to stop Atiku Saraki Tambua and the rider. Clash over returnee defectors rocks National Caucus meeting. An XVP 2023 poll, our last chance. Um, that's about the PDP. Akpano Duedege, APC convention plans on course, incessant grid collapse, power outages, and businesses. Incessant grid collapse, power outages, and businesses analysis, a piece on pages two and three of the nation newspaper. UK suspends student work family visas for Nigerians. Gunmen kill seven policemen, 11 others in Eboi, Kebi. Niger states. UK terminates COVID-19 restrictions from Friday. More from the Nation newspaper. Nigeria fails to meet OPEC's 1.78 million barrels per day quarter. That's not too good news in a time when the country is looking for money. High food fuel prices push inflation to 15.70%. Women protest enters eight day. They're still there if you had forgotten. And uh, finally, from the Nation newspaper, 35 million Nigerians have no access to telecoms, says NCC chief Dan Bata. Even if they did have access, how would they pay for the telecom services? All right, let's turn our attention now to our crack analyst, uh, Opunabo Inkotaria, who joins us live on Off the Press. Miss Inkotaria, thanks for your time. Let's uh, turn our attention to the leading paper on the front page of uh, Nation newspaper. Uh, they are alleging confusion in the People's Democratic Party over a plot to stop Atiku Saraki and Tambua. Uh, also, a clash over the returnee defectors is rocking the national caucus of the party. What are your thoughts on the PDP and this alleged uh, um, confusion in that party? That segment of your question, COVID, but not the second one. So when I'm done answering the first one, then you will help me repeat the second one. Nevertheless, when you talk of confusion in the PDP, you have competing and contending interests. You know, you are somewhere interested in the presidency, Saraki is interested in the presidency, Atiku is interested in the presidency. You also have WK interested in the presidency. And so each of them will try to outsmart the other. And that is exactly what is going on right now. They want to be emerged as a candidate, the flag bearers of the PDP. And these characters or persons I have mentioned are not human beings who could just wave, dismiss with the wave of the hand. No, they all have that clout. Now, the issue is, like I listened to Atiku yesterday, when he said the South-South in the uh, name of Asenjo and Good Lord Jonathan, sorry, the South, namely of Asenjo and Good Lord Jonathan, PDP produced the two of them, all in the 18 years or 16 years of his reign. It will therefore be unfair for it to be zoned to the south again. It should remain in the, it should be the son of the north. That was the argument of Atiku Abubakar yesterday, I think, at the board meeting, BOP meeting. But the PDP, from snippets of information cobbled together, 
I think is poised to zone the presidency to the south. And that is where the confusion is. Sambua is from the north. Saraki is from the north. Atiku is from the north. Wiki is from the south south. How do you balance it? You strike a compromise without necessarily sharing any form of problem that might truncate or jeopardize the chances of the party in the forthcoming general election. That is where the confusion is. That is the conundrum. So that is the crossroad. Okay. Let's also take a look at the Punch newspaper now. It talks about Boni's men fighting hold on APC and uh, Akpan Odoi, the guy returns to office. So we already understand, uh, you know, the fact that you have Boni on this other side. You also have Bello on the other hand. And underneath you have the caption, I mean, the convention remains shaky. Uh, court fails to lift up injunction and neck holds uh, Thursday. Now the, the cost of uh, chairmanship form has been increased to 20 million as aspirant also ignore the issue of consensus. So, but let's look at it. Uh, the, the issue right now, if you, if you look at the constitution, 183, uh, 1999 as amended, it talks about ha having a governor, I mean, uh, you know, a sitting governor not occupying any office whatsoever. And so between these two persons now, uh, he's returning, he was holding space for him. All of this um, illegality, because some persons have said that uh, whether or not you have Buni being, uh, you know, the chairman or you have, um, you have Bello, it's still invalid. But, but let's share your thoughts on some of these issues that have been raised by the Punch newspaper. It's a convoluted issue, my dear sister Messi. I say convoluted because I have an issue like from the beginning of the, um, what is this, caretaker committee. APC had breached the laws because a sitting governor going by the constitution is not expected to take to handle any other for executive office during the currency of his tenure. So that is one breach, and that is one legal cop that must be cleared. Otherwise, any, most of the exercises, if there is no judicial pronouncement on it, all, the, all what the APC will do, including the convention, will amount to nullity. Having said that, the Bello, Bello said is an acting chairman, and the Bello committee is not known in law, and INEC has so said. Because there are procedural obligations. If, they are, if you want to effect a change in your leadership, at least 21 days notice to INEC. And that letter invited INEC to honor your, your convention, more duly signed by the, not the chairman and the secretary of the party, that is within the cognizance of INEC and the law. The Bellows Committee is not known, and if the Bellows Committee are going to have to conduct the National Convention, it should have been an exercise in futility, because one court judgment would have nullified everything, and rightly so. And that was why there was a storm assault. Buari, if you listen to Aeropa, he spoke authoritatively that they had a meeting with Buari, and Buari was the one who authorized the change in leadership. Erufai said so, and Erufai is not somebody that will lie. He might be stubborn, he might be an obdurate person, but he's a man of rectitude. To me, I don't know what your opinion of him is anyway. And he said they had just finished from a meeting with the president, and Bello was the new chairman. Bello came and said he was the acting chairman. Now there is a somersault because they have taken into consideration the legal implications. And that might eventually remove APC from the ballot in the forthcoming general elections. That was why they brought back Bumi. Bumi is not an enemy security. That was just a substitute 
a migrant to save you from any form of embarrassment. It's not an anything we all know that. But you have been brought back so that the convention could take place. Otherwise, and that's why they say the convention is they'll shake it. But right now, I have a conviction that that convention will take place. Unless you have the fifth columnist in the party that will want to truncate every effort to ensure APC is on the ballot, just like what happened in River State and in Zafara State right. in the 2019 July elections. Okay, interesting. So I have a conviction yeah. that the convention will take place. And that convention will be superintended by Bumi and no other person. All right. Th thank you. But Mabu. then, there yeah. are these other legal hurdles to be crossed. The issue, because they have about 208 cases in court. So I wonder how they are going to come out of this legal culture. You, you keep because the you. issue of whether, yeah. the propriety rather, the issue of the propriety of the caretaker committee is still in dispute. Okay, it's open still up, in open up, we need to move so on. So if, yeah. if the court to make a pronouncement to say that a sitting governor cannot chair a caretaker committee, then which means APC will not even be on the ballot. All right, open up, we need because to move on. We need there to move on. The convention will be a nullity. Yes. And the convention is a constitution. Condition precedent. Okay, so Opuna, 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 can, can you hear me, please? Yeah. We, we, we need to move on. Yeah, we need to move to the next story. Yeah, but but I think okay. I think we'll be looking at this uh, in depthly uh, this morning on 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 the breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Um, the figures for Nigeria's inflation have been released uh, for February, and uh, amid the fuel crisis, the inflation has hit 15.70 percent. It's uh, heavy. Sorry, I didn't get. I'm not. I can't. I didn't get you. A missed Nigeria's fuel crisis, as captured on the front page of the Punch newspaper, a missed Nigeria's uh, fuel crisis. The inflation has hit 15.7%. Um, I don't know what the zero is doing there, uh, but 15.7% in February. So this means the, the general price level has increased, the prices of goods and services in the country. Um, before 2015, the inflation was, uh, was sub 10% you know, below 10%, it never exceeded 10%, which was good for the Nigerian economy and some would say miracle. But uh, we've been grappling, trying to push it down for years. Now it's spiked up to 15.7%, to which means that prices of goods and services have, have also sp skyrocketed. Um, this is in the middle of a fuel crisis. Mr. Inkotaria, you, your thoughts on, on this? Basically what Nigerians have. I think, uh, I think, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, Nigerians are being appreciated by our economy, no doubt about that. But I think we should commend the Buhari government that we are not talking of inflation rate of 30 percent. We are just talking of 15 or something percent. Considering the cataclysmic leadership that we are facing, if it's just 15 or something, 15 or something percent. Well, let us commend the government. I am just being sarcastic before people start reading all kinds of meanings into it. In other words, I'm not surprised. Because this is one government that is rudderless. It has no direction. A government that is not interested in the welfare of Nigerians. Even when the country is burning, you have a president that is frolicking, globe trotting. Is that how is it in place? responsible for the crisis in APC. That's the kind of leadership we have. There is no electricity, there is no, there is no fuel, all, right, all, all uh, organizations are on strike, are also on strike, and uh, the scholar of education lecturers are threatening strike, the police is threatening strike, even though the ID has denied it. But that should tell you our political engine is overheated. Social climate is still inflammatory. And economic factors are highly combustible. We are headed slowly, but steadily, or even touch us if we are ready to go with anarchy, occasioned by bad leadership. Nigerians are suffering. There is no money, no food, no job, nothing in this country. And you say it's not a failed state. How else can you describe a failed state? All right, uh, Okona Bonkataria, just uh, quickly on this one as we move away. It, it really, it's about the economy, and it's on the leadership newspaper this morning. 
It talks of Nigeria's 2022 budget deficit that may hit 10 trillion naira as oil export drops. Now, um, following the crisis in, I mean, of course, the conflict in Ukraine and Russia, uh, it has become, according to some economic experts, they are projecting that this would have been a, a better time for exporting countries to take advantage. But here we are, uh, what we're even going to be generating as revenue uh, we're exceeding that. I mean, we're going to be spending more than we're generating. Uh, we're looking at 10 trillion for 2022 in terms of exceeding our revenue. Uh, and the fact that we're not also going to meet the OPEC, you know, uh, quota that has been put for us. Uh, how, how does this really, really make you feel? And the question is, what can we do to get out of this? Um, I, I really get a question because you have the man by the background. However, let me, let me... So it's, a, it's, it's about... Me just, uh, can can you hear me now quickly? Let me, let me take that again. It's about the yes. Nigerians' 2022 budget deficit that may hit okay. 10 trillion naira as oil export drops. Yeah, so, so what is the question? So the question now is, I mean, the countries of the world are following the crisis in Ukraine. Uh, it's a greater time for oil exporting countries, you know, to end more. Yes. Well, here we are not being able to meet the quota for uh, by being put out by uh, OPEC. And uh, we're going to be you know, spending more than we're going to be generating. We will end more because they don't export their raw material. They don't export their crude for countries outside to refine and sell to us again. So they maximize profit. But what is going on right now? Our refinery is working. The refineries are just country pipes. We export. Then to uh, foreign countries, they refine, the, they refine the crude there, and we now import again. I mean, it's simple economic. You don't, you don't need to even be a graduate. You don't need to have a problem with the name or your certificate, whether there is a, a, a or an N, to know the, what, what that is going to have, that you're going to be faced with a lot of problems when you do that. It's simple. It is not as if Nigerians are not intelligent, but because the man at the head of our guys, I'm a national telly, I'm a national telly, I'm a national telly. But because the man at the head of our guys, I'm very sorry to say this, knows nothing about the economics of politics, uh, 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 of oil. He's been deceived. His lieutenants are feeding fat on the so-called turn around, on the so-called oil, on the so-called this. And that is what is happening. They place their own interest ahead of the Nigerian interest. That is where we are now. They are the superior, what did he say? He said, how many million barrels missing can we accounted for? That's what the general said, few days ago. How can we make profit? It's not possible. When those that are supposed to be protecting the economy are looting the economy, where will the profit come from? Okay, uh, 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 it's a good time. Open up, let 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 why? Because there is no electricity. Stick through to power. If we have to most of the that things change. Let us stop, stop embarrassing facts. What is the difference between a man who loots, who defaults, and a man who carries a gun? Tell me what's the difference. There's no difference. In fact, the man who carries a gun is better than a man who loots. Because the man who carries a gun will probably have one man. But the man who is in office that loots, has robbed millions. And that is the brain of our society. Okay. Well, uh, open up. We have to, you know, let you go at this point in time, and that's because we're really out of time. Uh, we do appreciate you making our time, despite all of the, you know, hustle and all of the 
difficulties <laughs> that were faced we hope with. You, you hope you have issues. electricity where you are. <laughs> Sorry? So we hope you have power supply where you are. Oh, well, you just asked a question now. Uh, uh, oh, there is power supply in Nigeria. That is luxury. All right, all right. Means, means you don't have power where you are. Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. We, yeah, have, we have to let you go now. Let, let's keep mm. praying, Upodabo and Kotaria, for hopefully the light will come back. Thank you very much. Well, it's obvious that you are not affected by the economy. You're looking so sweet, both of you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a well, it's part that. of the job. That, that's Thank you so much for being part of the show yeah. this morning. Right, my dear. Thank you. It's so my much. pleasure. We appreciate it. Well, that's the size of our conversation this morning on Off the Press and Open Abo. Uncle Tyra is a public affairs analyst. We do appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we look forward to having more of you on the show. We will uh, take a break now. But just before that break, let's let you know what happened today in history. <laughs>